to this first public seminar that is being held as part of the launch of the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative, or OFI. I'm Sabina Alkair. Um, we're thrilled to be holding this event here in Queen Elizabeth House, where OFI is based. Our aim will be to contribute to an integrated, multidimensional framework for poverty reduction, which incorporates different dimensions of poverty and eventually different principles of assessment. This aim has been much inspired by Amartya Sen, Tony Atkinson, Sudhir Anand, and many others' writings on human development and capability. We're currently engaged in research workshops on multidimensional poverty. And we hope that this research will catalyze debate and action. Hence, we look forward to your very frank and energetic questions today. Also, these seminars will be available on the web tomorrow. In addition to this seminar, we are holding two seminars here tomorrow. Uh, the first, What Space for New Economic Approaches, with Michael Spence and Amartya Sen at 9 a.m., and the second on di dis directions for research in multidimensional welfare economics at 11.30 with Tony Atkinson and again Francois Bourguignon. And directly following this seminar, Professor Marc Sen will be delivering a university lecture entitled What Theory of Justice in the Sheldonian? And we can move from here to there as a group. Finally, it gives me great pleasure to welcome in particular this panel and its chair, Professor Sudhir Anand. Professor Anand is a distinguished professor of economics at Oxford and a world-recognized development microeconomist, having published widely in the field of human development and poverty. He's one of three members of the advisory committee of OFI, along with Professor Sen and Tony Atkinson. I welcome you, Sudhir, and I look forward to all of your interaction. Thank you. Um, and good afternoon and welcome to you all um, to this public seminar on missing dimensions of poverty data. Now, uh, many of you would already have attended the Missing Dimensions workshop, which took place over four sessions yesterday and two sessions this morning. And the sessions included coverage of missing dimensions of uh, poverty. The idea there is that examining the data requirements for these dimensions of poverty is, uh, uh, is, is premised on seeing poverty as capability deprivation rather than as lowness of incomes. Income information, as uh, uh, many of uh, you have uh, read and written about, is often insufficient to characterize and analyze poverty because the conversion of income into achieved well-being is subject to great variation. The mapping of income into basic capabilities is significantly affected by personal heterogeneities such as age, disability, illness, gender and social roles, environmental and epidemiological conditions, among many other factors. There is thus an important need to go beyond income information in analyzing poverty, and in particular to see poverty as capability deprivation. Now, apart from the basic capabilities involved in leading a minimally acceptable life, such as avoiding hunger or undernourishment or preventable morbidity, there are elementary social functionings, such as appearing in public without shame, or taking part in the life of the community. And the income requirements of such capability fulfillment will vary between communities within a country and between countries. Indeed, as Sen has convincingly argued, poverty is an absolute notion in the space of capabilities, but it often takes a relative form in the space of commodities. For example, to avoid shame, from the inability to meet the demands of custom or convention in a society, the relative income requirements will typically be higher in richer countries. And these requirements will vary with what others in the community standardly have. 
and Sen gives the usual, uh, not usual, but the exact, uh, a typical example of uh, 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 quoting Adam Smith of a creditable day laborer who was ashamed to appear in public without a linen shirt. So that, that relative deprivation in the space of incomes leads to, or can lead to, an absolute deprivation in the space of capabilities. The attempt in this Missing Dimensions workshop has been, I think, to examine such other functionings, um, social functionings and others, apart from hunger or undernourishment, which are uh, quite largely um, uh, uh, income-driven, if you like, and also to consider the data requirements for these other functionings, these missing dimensions of poverty. And with that, what I want to do is to um, call upon Sabina to introduce the missing dimensions that each of the five authors will briefly consider before there is a response from our three panelists. Sabina. Thank you. The five authors of these papers face a very unfair task. So my job is to explain that to you, so you will understand and sympathize. <clears throat> As an investment in our ability to do future research, OPI has chosen to focus on nationally representative <coughs> surveys that give rise to internationally comparable data. We could have chosen other levels of data, but this is one area in which we think missing data deeply constrains comparative research and learning. So each paper identifies key research questions we could not answer without such data. Further, we have chosen dimensions of human development that are important and usually missing from the four standard surveys, the Demographic and Health Survey, the Multiple Indicator Cluster Survey, the Living Standards Measurement Survey, and the Core in Welfare Income, sorry, the Quick uh, Questionnaire. The dimensions are physical safety, employment, empowerment, and the ability to go about without shame. We also look at psychological and subjective well-being, which is important, but not, in our view, a dimension of poverty. So we propose survey questions for multi-topic individual and household questionnaires, rather than for separate survey instruments, such as labor force surveys. Why? Because the dimensions of poverty are interconnected, and we require an empirical scrutiny of these interconnections available with data at the individual level. So for this, we need all of the questions together from one survey instrument. So our suggestions aim to complement the tremendous data collection success that has accompanied the Millennium Development Goals and strengthened income and consumption data. Each of the authors has developed her or his module to respect practical issues of feasibility and technical issues in regards to data quality and research needs. First, the survey modules needed to be brief, five to eight questions long. Second, we could never propose an untried survey question, but only those which have been used internationally to good effect. Third, we have tried to identify and learn from groups who proposed similar short lists and build on the existing work in international institutions. Fourth, we have scrutinized resulting data from these other questionnaires to see if it could be expected to be comparable, sensitive to changes, accurate, reliable, and valid. Finally, we have selected questions that can be used to test critically important research issues whose results we hope will accelerate poverty reduction. A final constraint is time and completeness. This is a work in, our, in progress, and we have surely missed many points. And for this reason, we seek your input, even as we have enjoyed it over the past day and a half. <clears throat> our purpose in developing and proposing these shortlists is very simple. We wish to catalyze debate and action. So our lists are imperfect and not final but we thought that it would be easier for a group of busy experts to tell us why a shortlist is wrong 
than to develop one in a plenary like this. Still, our authors faced common issues. First, they had to make value judgments on their own in selecting indicators, which were important and which were technically sufficient, knowing all to be imperfect. There were rarely clear answers. So to facilitate public discussion, they tried to articulate the reasons for their assessments so others could improve them as appropriate. Second, all the modules except for employment include one or more subjective questions. Data will be difficult to interpret because poor people often have become reconciled to their situation and so may report themselves to be better off than they objectively appear to be. Our papers acknowledge this challenge explicitly, but we included these questions because we think sound analysis of subjective data is possible, although intricate. And finally, we are aware that there are many ongoing processes to design surveys and increase the statistical capacities of countries. We have tried to learn from them even so far, and we hope that they might be empowered to take, use, and improve upon this work. OPI's final aim is not to gather data, but to catalyze the collection of data that will support a deeper understanding of the causes and responses to human suffering. So I turn now to the authors of the papers.